So this video, apparently Joe Biden awarded a Vietnam vet the Medal of Honor, and he's getting it after 60 years. And I'm just wondering what he did to uh, to earn the Medal of Honor and kind of why it took so long to give him the Medal of Honor. And it's not because of something malicious or anything. In fact, I'm, I'm sure that I could explain why he doesn't have the Medal of Honor yet and why they waited, because a lot of the time what happens is the military and the government will agree that what you should get as a, a accommodation for your actions in combat is something they want to keep more low key. So they won't give you the medal of honor. They'll give you like the, the army cross or the air force cross or the, the silver star things of this nature. And they do that because they're not, they're not as well known. They're not as well celebrated because the medal of honor is the highest medal that we give. So the medal of honor comes with the government having a story of what you did that they share publicly and if you're doing a mission that is covert or or secret by nature they're more likely to want to keep that covert and secret by nature so they're not going to publicly announce what you did so they'll give you a, a lower medal that way that's not done and i think that may very well be what took place here medal of honor for black Vietnam vet who saved three injured soldiers okay. in a fierce battle. It's a recognition that took nearly 58 years to happen, writing what some see as a... Okay, so it's not 60 years, and their, their title for this was misleading. It is rounded up, but that's not bad. More than a half a century for his country to... Was he really waiting for him to get a medal for this? If he was, that's... I feel like that's just the way that the media is praising this, is what I'm getting at. Like they didn't, most veterans aren't like yearning and like people in the military, like you're not yearning for medals and recognition of what you did. It's, I was there and I did what I did and I did what I had to do. And like, I, my friend was in trouble and I saved him. This guy's like a brother to me and he was injured. So I saved him. It's just, it's what you do. You're not looking for accolades and recognition. And I highly doubt that this man was either. And that this is just the way the media is putting a spin on it to try and shit on like previous presidents in a, a negative way for no good reason. Honor is heroism. Davis crawled through blood, mud, pain, and withering enemy fire, carrying his wounded comrades on his back to reach this moment at the White House. That it took a battle against bureaucracy for him to receive the Medal of Honor leaves many who have heard his story dumbfounded. It's been a long time coming. What's the moment feel like? Everything is good. And I feel very comfortable and it took a while. It took a long while. But it's here. And okay. I'm really proud to be an American. Okay, maybe he actually does feel like he's been waiting to be recognized. That's an interesting take. Yep. Yeah, it, it's not like the Vietnam War was taking place during a period in our history that's really all that fantastic. And there's two ways of looking at it, and I'm going to point this out because of the way our media does this in a way that peddles hate. And I, I can't stand the way they do this. So they're, you have this period of time, and the way the media spins this is, look how terrible the country is and how horribly we treat our people of this demographic and that demographic we're terrible people we need to do something to make this right a better way of looking at it is our country did terrible things in the past look how far we've come in honestly a very short period of time it seems like oh well we had slaves just a few generations ago that's not very long it's only been about 150 years or something of this nature right 100 150 years so people get mad about that still the thing is yes it's terrible but our country was established with slavery already here we were colonies that had slaves here like we we started off with this as like a a handicap that puts a mar in our history that we look back on like damn that's shitty 
but the current spin on it also ignores the fact that there are way more slaves right now than there've ever been at any point in history ever not only that but it also ignores the fact that our country went to war with itself to correct these types of things like there there was much more it was a lot of a lot of it was about how the taxes were set up and how the economics from the north were were derived in a way to handicap and hard set up a difficult and hard situation for the south to keep them impoverished instead of becoming wealthy and capable like it's it's more nuanced than just slavery is what i'm saying so there's a lot there and in a short period of time relatively to what you have throughout history our country corrected having slavery if you go back and you look at how long it took for say britain or france or rome or literally any country or government or state to have ever existed in history that abolished slavery we did it in a shorter span of time being a country than anybody else we're actually a very young hit country in terms of history in comparison to other nations and i think that's something to be proud of the fact that while our country does do ter- or has done terrible things we like nobody's perfect no country is perfect and we still do things that are wrong and they're bad but our country has a historical precedent and a historical tendency to correct our terrible actions faster than other countries do and i think that's something to take note of it's how i choose to view these things and i think it gets missed quite a bit the green beret on his second tour in vietnam hell yeah green berets war for his country i love those guys home in working with them was always good was fighting him when one day his commanding officer our country was fighting every veteran that came back from vietnam let's not forget that either it it wasn't just black people if you came back from vietnam you were being physically assaulted attacked spit on having things thrown at you because you were in vietnam with our military has nothing to do with your race sir asked him to be in charge he made a point of saying you know this is all white Yep. And, and to be honest, they do that in teams today to some extent as well. David Goggins talks about that. And they, they, so part of the reason David Goggins highlights this in his book, uh, can't hurt me. Part of the reason that in his experience, he went through the same thing in the seal teams with being challenged and being told like, this is a white team. Do you think you can handle that? And challenging with racial slurs and some other stuff. And he tells you they didn't do this out of a malicious reason. They did it to test his character, his response, and the way that he would react to it. Because when you go to another country, they will attack you based on race. And because of the historical relevance that like we just briefly went through with black Americans, you've got the fact that it is a sensitive topic to a lot of this demographic of American citizens. So they test that water because you're going to have to interact with the locals and they very well may hate you because of the color of your skin and they can't have somebody trying to interact with these people in a positive way to train them or to gain their allegiance or to build a relationship with these people. If you're going to hear these racial slurs that they throw at you and instead of overcoming that to build a bridge, under the most difficult of circumstances and you're instead going to make it more difficult it's going to hinder the team's ability to do their job <clears throat> so they they have to test the water and it's it's something that's it's one of those things that's regrettable that gets done but there is a reason it happens whether we like it or not and it's important that we understand the nuance to it and the fact that it's something that has to happen regardless. Otherwise, we're going to burn bridges, like the foundation of a bridge, before we ever get the chance to build that bridge and have a positive relationship with people 
who are already our adversaries or uh, grew up with our enemies as their best friends. And we're trying to build a bridge with these people instead of develop deeper animosity than being at war with each other already does. And three other special forces soldiers it's not an easy thing to do. South Vietnamese troops. Then, one June night, he led them into a ferocious battle. Specialist Jeez. Robert Brown. Runny nose today. Down. Davis called out to get him, suffering a shrapnel yep. wound from a grenade. Sounds right. I was on the night duty and uh, trigger finger. And my trigger finger. Okay. Oh man, that would suck. Imagine that you're in war and you lose your trigger finger. That means everything about how you conduct your combat to engage the enemy is now compromised because all of your training is now compromised. Your grip on the gun is different, so it's going to impact your accuracy and everything. It, it like that's that's actually a bigger deal than it sounds like. It compromises his ability to engage the enemy and stay alive. I I would stop. Once I got out there, Brown said to me, it looks like they got him like a prosthetic or got it back on or something. Or maybe that's his middle finger and it's just the way he holds his hands together because they're folded, they're interlocked. To help Master Sergeant Billy Waugh, who was pinned down, his leg in tatters. Yeah. He had to take his yep. leg and wrap it around my back. Mm -hmm. It was mud and blood. I mean, it was a, just... That Master Sergeant was his bubba, and he was, was he was Forrest Gump in that situation. For the Medal of Honor, but the Army... See, he was nominated for it. And that might be why he's been waiting for it and why he feels like he, it's about time is because he was nominated for it and he just didn't receive it, but they did put him up for it, which keep in mind, like he said, they challenged him. They gave him those racial challenges and this is an all white team, et cetera, et cetera. This highlights what I was saying about how it's a challenge toward them in order to see how they'll respond to make sure that we can build bridges and that they're going to benefit the team in that terrible situation and circumstance rather than make the job impossible for the team to succeed. Otherwise, they would not have recommended him for the nation's highest medal of esteem and recognition. He wouldn't have been nominated for this at all if they had done that out of maliciousness and hatred and racism. We lost the paperwork. He was renominated four years later. Oh man, yeah, see, no way. They, so they nominated him more times than once. That that makes it my point more relevant. Is there any really plausible explanation as to how this could have happened? I, I don't have it. There is. The Medal of Honor is not easily received, and the majority of people who get the Medal of Honor are dead. The fact that he sa he saved three of his friends, his his teammates, and uh, got wounded as well, is not in itself enough to really say you deserve the Medal of Honor. And after this, actually, I'm going to pull up reasons why, and I'm going to show you. We'll get into it. Yep. You think it was race? I do. I disagree. Absolutely. I strongly disagree. Did you fear that it would never happen? I forgot that it could happen. I'm happy that it did happen. Today at the White. Look at that ribbon rack. That, that's impressive. And here's why it's impressive. You see his ribbon rack way up here. It comes over here as well. That's what makes it impressive. Like my, like a ribbon rack can only, is only supposed to go so high on your lapel until you move it to the other side, and that does not happen very often. For him to have that many medals or this many awards really and then decorations within them as well which means he was awarded these more than once as well as like a medal a medal that's a marksman or a rifleman badge paratrooper badge so these are related to his job rank that looks like army stuff but not medals but these are these are actual like medals that's it's impressive to see people who have their medals come over to the right hand side of their 
their jacket as well. It's extremely rare that people get that many medals. White House, an honor delay. So once again, I highly doubt it's because of race, because look at the amount of medals this man received. What a warrior. Hey, but so what a warrior. Deserve. These might actually be more medals, and I just don't recognize them. So we're going to pull this up right now because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys this. Um, we'll even look look this up because it's even, even more rare, and the racism then was worse. So we'll look up Black Medal of Honor Recipients World War II. We're not going to go to the Wikipedia. I actually want to go to the government page because they might tell the stories. Let's see. No, no. That's not going to do it. Do, do, do. You know what? Let's, we will pull up Wikipedia because Wikipedia will probably have an easier list of this. If we just come in here, we should be able to organize it fairly decent at least, right? So World War II. Oh, that just took us to World War II. It's not going to do it either. Every Black Medal of Honor recipient in U.S. history. From the Civil War. Now, if you want to talk about a time where there was racism and race would have stopped you, that would be it, right? Scroll way down so we can maybe get to some World War II stuff. Or let's actually, I don't know why I'm doing this the hard way. It's worth noting that no black service members were awarded the Medal of Honor during or immediately after World War II. World War II was actually extremely racist during that period of time toward black people in the way that we even in, let them join the military. First of all, they didn't want to have black people in the military at all during World War II. They had to fight for that opportunity. Then they wanted them to not be put in any kind of combat role. They were only supposed to be in support roles. So doing logistics, you're bringing the gas, you're bringing the food, you're bringing the water. You're not actually engaging the enemy. And then they said, that's not good enough for us. We want to fight for this country too. And they did. And they also got many, many Medal of Honors out of this later on. And once again, to be perfectly honest, most World War or most Medal of Honor recipients get them posthumously because what they do leads to death, which is what we're going to show here. I believe Henry Johnson is actually one of the ones that I was thinking of too. I'm terrible at names. So the names in my head aren't, aren't very, very good to go off of. <clears throat> ah, here's the one I want to go over. I recognize his face. I'm, I'm better with faces than names. This guy is incredible. Staff Sergeant Edward A. Carter Jr., U.S. Army, World War II. Now, Edward Carter was the son of missionary parents before he came to NCO. We'll skip past all this. Uh, he had military experience as a 15-year-old lieutenant in the Chinese Army. Like, this guy, he jumped armies so that he could join militaries because this guy was a warrior through and through. And he did not get his posthumously either, by the way. Uh, during World War II, he was stripped of his rank and assumed the role as a private because black men don't lead white soldiers. Like I said, it was a very racist time within the military as a whole, and that's why I want to use this as an example. And he didn't care. He said, fine, do it. I don't care about the rank. I just want to go and fight. He was in a tank convoy driving through a field. The Germans launched a vicious ambush on his tank and was rendered and his tank was rendered useless. His four man tank squad ran for cover because the tank was on fire. Two of them were killed. One was seriously, seriously wounded. Carter was the only one to make it to cover. He was wounded five times. Eight Germans flanked him and tried to take him alive, but he killed six of them. He used the remaining two as human shields to run to his unit. His two POWs gave up valuable intelligence. Like, that's not even his whole story. In fact, we're just going to take uh, Edward A. Carter Jr., and we're going to search that one. 
because that's we're going to we're going to look at his story because that is exactly what I wanted was his. And we'll go to blackpast.org. Let's see what they have to say because they probably go into his whole thing. So this is the story we just read. See, and he lived out the remainder of his life as a family man working vehicle tire business in 92. Uh, Secretary of the Army commissioned an independent study to identify unrecognized African-American heroes from World War II. Because once again, this is 60 years later, roughly, right? Uh, less than that, but we'll round up 60 years later. And he got recognized for his duties as well as many other African-American soldiers were. The study was completed in 96. Carter identified and recommended for honors, and then Clinton did so as well. This has gone on for a long time. In all honesty, they still review these types of things. And the point is, these are the types of actions that get you a Medal of Honor in a lot of instances. It's it's not just, here's somebody who did something and he lived and he gets it. He gets his Medal of Honor. Most of the time they die. It's, it's extremely wild. And I can tell you for a fact, out of the Air Force, the majority of the people who got the Medal of Honor were pararescue. So they're, they're going into situations where people are already under fire. They're being engaged by the enemy. They're surrounded. They're injured. They're outnumbered. The odds are completely against anybody getting out alive. And pararescue goes in. Pararescue goes in and they take damage as well, but they have to not only fight back the enemy, they're medics. Their primary job is to be a combat medic. They're parachuting in, and they're trying to rescue guys that are injured while engaging an enemy, knowing that they are outnumbered, outgunned, and the, at a huge disadvantage. So, And a lot of the time, these guys die while saving four or five other people and that's how they get a medal of honor it's not because they have some like crazy amount of oh well here's this story where i saved a few people and i got a little bit of of flack or i took a bullet here or there it's i died while i was doing this and these guys don't get it like oh well here you are a few months later. It, it takes these guys years to get the Medal of Honor as well. Like getting the Medal of Honor is already a long process. 60 years is an exorbitant amount of time. It's not, I'm not trying to excuse the length. I'm just pointing out that this is not something that happens immediately ever. It's always a process. And it takes a long time. Like there's a lot of bureaucracy into getting that medal. So it takes... It takes a significant period of time. 